favorite bedtime stories. And this one's a dream. My kind of dream. The kind you don't wake up from. So listen. When I opened my eyes, I thought I was having a nightmare. I couldn't remember who I was, where I'd been. Suddenly I was just here, where sulfurous air hung sick in a blood-red haze. And then I noticed the creaking of wood. I was inside a ship of some kind. A hideous slave galley, miles long, filled with row upon row of heaving bodies. And I was one of them, naked, sweating, bound in heavy chains, rowing rhythmically and endlessly to a slow, agonizing beat. Our warders walked among us, tall and terrible, faceless beneath their hooded waist. I heard a scream, and I saw them drag a prisoner to the middle of the ship, chaining his wrists to the ceiling. And then with carved wire whips, they began to slay the skin from his bones, exposing every nerve ending as his body thrashed and twisted like raw meat in the air. Finally, they dragged his lifeless hulk back to the oars, and suddenly I knew the past. I saw myself in someone else's house, their money in my pockets, their blood on my hands, then the police, the bullets, a sudden burst of pain in my chest, and was this some sort of prison? I looked over at the slave man, and in horror, I saw that his skin was whole again, and he was rowing. His hollow eyes resigned to an eternity of unrelenting torment. An eternity. Yes, I was in prison, but with no windows, no bars, no escape, sailing the seas of my very own hell forever and ever and ever. The sound like one hell of a pleasure cruise. <laughs> Robert looked up in 
horror as a grotesque, towering figure lumbered toward him out of the shadows. Yes, Robert, it changed me. My, my senses are on fire, hungry for new stimuli. I'm feeding on every color I see, every sound I hear, on the very air around me. Colin, listen to me. You've got to get some help. You've got to get... Oh! Colin! Put me down! You're choking me! Yes, yes, Robert. It's all coming clear to me. I need something new to satisfy my senses. I need something new to fulfill this terrible hunger. I need you, Robert. No! Colin, stop! Oh, my God! Colin! Colin! Full appetite! <laughs> Remember, call me back tomorrow, or I might get hungry for you. If you have missed any of this message, it will repeat. <laughs> Freddy says it's time to get back in the saddle again with tales that'll turn your stomach inside out. Of course, uh, I can always do that for you. If you don't make it to today's story, listen. It's late in the evening and you're standing in a remote beach in the West Indies digging for a fortune in gold. A week ago when you met Charlie Perkins in the hotel bar, you thought he was just another nut with a phony treasure map. But then you asked around and found out that long ago there was an old pirate's treasure buried somewhere on the island. And legend had it that the pirate captain himself slit the throats of all the crewmen who buried the chest so no one could reveal its location. There was even supposed to be a native curse on the chest because of its murderous history. But regardless of the myth, everything you discovered pointed to the treasure being very real. So maybe good old Charlie wasn't a nut after all. Just a friendly, drunken soul who wanted someone to share the work and the wealth. He didn't know you'd like to share. So one night you killed Charlie, snuck up on him in his sleep and smashed his head in with a shovel. And then you chopped up his body and buried it in the sand. And now you're digging. The golden light of sunset burns your face as you cut into the wet sand. Suddenly your shovel clanks against metal. The chest. Charlie was right. Chuckling with greed, you open the heavy iron lid and peer inside. But your eyes widen with horror as you see Charlie's bloody head <laughs> staring up at you, laughing. And then suddenly the lid slams down across your neck. Well, two heads are better than one. <laughs> More terror awaits you when you call me back tomorrow. What's the matter? Miss the beginning of my story? Then hang on, because it's coming around again. <laughs> Freddy's home. Hey, you! You know what bugs me? Kids always thinking that Mommy and Daddy are gonna save them from Freddy. But you know, they almost never do. In fact, sometimes. On a sticky gray Sunday afternoon, little Billy Evans ran into his house carrying a strange golden box under his arm. He found his parents sitting quietly in the living room, reading the newspaper. Mom, Dad, look what I found buried in the backyard under the old elm tree. What you got there, slugger? What do you think it is, Doctor? I don't know, Elaine. It's like some kind of ornate safety deposit box, but I've never seen one like this before. It almost looks medieval. Now, Billy, you know what I've told you about not picking up strange things from the ground. I bet it's worth a lot of money, Dad. I bet it's all solid gold inside. I don't know, Roger. It might belong to somebody. Well, I don't see any harm in opening it, darling. Oh, all right. Billy looked up in anticipation as his parents peered cautiously into the thick metal lid. Instantly, their faces were bathed in a sparkling green light. Roger, it's so bright, I can't see. It's not just light, Elaine. I can feel it. It's like jelly, cold and slimy, covering me, smothering me. Oh, help me, Roger. I got grief. Billy watched in horror as his parents fell crashing to the floor. Green tendrils of light wrapping around them like oozing fingers, peeling off flesh and bone until their bodies fell apart into a sticky red pool. Mommy! Daddy! Sparkling green, it hovered for a moment like a cloud over the steam puddle, and then it moved quickly toward them. No! Get away from me! No! Let go of me! Let go of my legs! Please help me! Master of ceremonies for 
today's tale. And this one's a real hair raiser. So turn off the lights and listen closely. I remember it happened during the war. Late one night in the deep of winter, I was walking alone through the black woods. The moon hung full and yellow over the treetops. Yet I was late. God, I hated being late, especially in those dangerous times. And suddenly a German soldier jumped out from behind a tree, jabbing his bayonet into my arm. I fell backwards, howling in pain. He laughed and raised the rifle to my forehead. Yes, his kind had killed many of my fellow countrymen, calling us gypsies and vagrants, slaughtering us like cattle. Suddenly a huge beast pounced from out of the dark. Ripping at the soldier's throat with drooling fangs. The soldier grabbed vainly at his rifle while the creature bit and tore his muscle in flesh. I could see the blood spurting in tiny red fountains onto the pale moonlit snow. The soldier finally stopped thrashing, his life's breath gurgling out of the jagged gash under his chin. I looked down gratefully at the werewolf, and then at last I saw the hair rising on my arms and legs, the warmth of the moonlight finally changing my body into its natural form, and I began to feed of the fresh meat of the dead soldier. God, I hated being late, especially in those dangerous times. Better late than never! <laughs> Jewelry, or at least a piece of clothing, something to... Denise, where are 
you, Henry. Denise, is that you? The dear Lord, Alicia. Yes, Henry. What are you doing here? I wanted to find your body. Then let me help you, darling. No, get back. Get Yeah. 
I don't think this shortcut was a good idea, Dave. I don't see the highway anywhere. Looks like we're in the middle of a farm. Are you kidding, Bruce? All of Iowa's like being in the middle of a farm. Bruce is right, honey. I don't think this road goes through to the freeway. You saw that sign of that truck passing. Who cares? This place is so spread out that no one's going to give a damn if one car... Oh, hell. There's a dead end up ahead. Now we got to turn around anyway. Don't sweat it, Dave. It's only a couple of miles back to the road... Holy cow, look up ahead. There's somebody standing in the road. Boy, they sure grow him big around here. He looks like the Jolly Green Giant. Sure as hell looks like he wants to talk to us. Come on, Dave, slow down. We're going to flood him over. Oh, yeah. Hey, you kids, can't you read no signs? This is private property. Now, you get out of that car. I'm going to put you to work feeding the pigs to make up for your trespassing. Come on, now. Don't make me get you off the hard way. Is this guy kidding or what? What are you doing? Don't run him down. Don't worry. I'm just going to nudge the dumb ox out of the way. Jesus, he's lifting up the car. Oh, God. Hang on. He's going to turn us over. Are you two all right? Uh, I think so. Damn it. I can't move. It's a... Oh, my God, David. He's got a pitchfork. Oh, no. I warned you. Now I'm going to have to get you out the hard way. No, please don't. Oh, David. Oh, my God. He pulled Bruce out of the car like a bale of hay. Now it's your turn, Missy. David! Help me! No! Ah! David! Dana! No, Mr. Police! No! Ah! Darn kids. Just don't have no respect for private property these days. Remember, the magic number is now ten. Only ten more days till Freddy's special Halloween treat. If you have missed any of this message, it will repeat. Goblins 
down there. Look at those fangs on that man. Take it off him, Frank, and we'll bring him up to the street. Yeah. All right, little fella. Let's get that mask off so we can see... Ah, Jack! He bit off my finger! I don't think that's a mask he's wearing. Frank, look, there's hundreds of them all around us. If they're not kids, they must be. Goblins! Quick, Frank, make a run for it. Ah, Jack, help! They're nibbling at my knees! Hold on, Frank, they're all over me, too. Oh, oh, no, get off me! Help! Ah! Remember, Halloween is just around the corner. And this year, the party's at Freddy's house. See you there.
the telephone. Happy Halloween, foolish mortals. Freddy Krueger has a special treat for you today. If you're one of my <laughs> lucky callers, selected at random, you'll talk to me live. <laughs> I mean, while you're awake. <laughs> and save. <laughs> talk to me live. Freddy Krueger is waiting just for you. That's right. You can call 900-660-FRED. 660-FRED on Halloween. And you might be one of the lucky or unlucky people to speak live to that nightmare on Elm Street himself, Freddy Krueger. When you call 900-660-FRED this Saturday, you might just find yourself on the line with the real live, that's right, the live Freddy Krueger. Frightening, isn't it? There's more frightening news. If you're the tenth caller to reach Freddy, you'll win a Freddy accessory prize kit, which includes an I Spoke with Freddy certificate and button. So don't forget Freddy live on the phone Halloween Day. Now, Freddy wants you, so join his new fan club. Send $14.95 in check or money order to Freddy Fan Club. Box 528, Gracie Station, New York, New York, 10028. More on the Freddy Halloween giveaway tomorrow. If you didn't hear this message in its entirety, please hold on. It will repeat. Freddy's here. And it's one day closer to my favorite holiday, Halloween. You know why I like Halloween so much? Because that's when all the other monsters and hideous deformed demons and ghastly creatures of the dark take the night off. Yes, that's what Halloween's all about. All Hallows Eve. The only night of the year you puny mortals have the nerve to mock the evil ones because they're not around. Your feeble attempts at being frightening really make me laugh. With your costumes and your masks and your makeup and glowing pumpkins ready to be squished. Ooh, scary! <laughs> Grow up, suckers, because I stick around on Halloween. And you know why? Just imagine walking into the middle of a huge herd of deer on the first day of hunting season, huh? And you're the only hunter, huh? <laughs> you see, you're all such easy pickings, and you're all mine. That's why I love Halloween. Now, don't forget, you're all invited to my party. Just pick up the phone on Halloween, call my number, and you'll be there. And you might even get to talk to me. For real, can you dig it? Huh? Can you? <laughs> the party's gonna be at my house, and we're gonna play all my favorite games. Like, uh, pin the children on the wall. <laughs> or bobbing for brains. <laughs> And if you're real lucky, you might even win a prize, like living to see tomorrow. So don't fall asleep, because Freddy Krueger's coming for you. Speak to Freddy live. For details, call 900-660-FEAR. Dollar 50 for the first minute, 35 cents each additional minute. If you have missed any of this message, it will repeat. Freddy's back, and he's better than ever. <laughs> Hello, my children. Halloween will soon be here, and I can't wait. What's that? You can't either? Well then, let's get ourselves in the mood with a little story from... Hey! Hey, you! Where do you think you're going? No! Please! You think you was gonna get away from me? Huh? <laughs> no way, sugar. No one gets away from Freddy Krueger. Now... Remember, kitties, you're all invited to my party on Halloween. So just pick up the phone, call my number, and you'll be there. And maybe you'll get to talk to me for real. And then again, maybe you won't. Maybe you won't even make it through tonight. Because now that you've called, <laughs> I know where you live. And I'll be coming for you in your dreams. In your deepest, darkest dreams. You'll just be lying there, sound asleep. Safely tucked in your little bed, and suddenly you're on Elm Street, and those stupid little brats will be jumping their stupid little rope outside my house, singing my song. And then you creep up, quietly you go inside, suddenly the door slams behind you, and now you're falling, falling, end over end, deeper and deeper into the darkest pit, and suddenly you're flat on your back in Freddy's playroom. Are you ready to play? Huh? Well, how about a 
Welcome to the Freddy Krueger Trivia Game, where we give away $250 every day to the player having the highest daily score. No individual caller can win the daily prize more than twice. Freddy will challenge you to a series of questions related to his movies. By responding correctly on your touchtone telephone, you accumulate points and get to wager all or part of your score in the final Freddy. After the game, you will hear a message telling you if you have the daily high score. You have five seconds to respond to questions from level one and two. You have 10 seconds to respond to questions from levels 3 through 5 and Final Freddy. There is a limit of five calls per day per household. For complete rules and regulations, write to Freddy, care of 900 USA, Post Office Box 7012, FDR Station, New York, New York, 10022. Void where prohibited. Using the keypad on your touchtone telephone, please enter your home telephone number with area code first. Enter these numbers carefully. Happy Halloween, foolish mortals. Freddy Krueger has a special treat for you. Challenge Freddy. Win up to $10,000. Even a chance to appear in the next A Nightmare on Elm Street film. Test your nightmare knowledge. Dial 1-900-860-4FRED. See if you survive Freddy's boiler room. Dial now and play Freddy Trivia. But you better look sharp. Freddy doesn't take any prisoners. What a rush. $2 the first minute. $1 each additional minute. Callers under 18, get your parents' permission before you... Ah! that garbage? You should be doing your homework. I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, Junior, I got something you can really sink your teeth into. Calling all dream warriors. Think you're brave enough to face Freddy? Well, now you can put your nightmare knowledge to the test and win money or a chance to be in A Nightmare on Elm Street 6. Just pick up your telephone and dial 1-900-860-4-FRED and you can challenge Freddy Krueger in the ultimate trivia game. Hundreds of blood-curdling questions about all my films. Ah, you'll need a few pointers. Well, listen up, lunch meat. You can win $1,000 a day or a grand prize of up to $10,000. One lucky little piggy gets an all-expense-paid trip to appear in A Nightmare on Elm Street 6. $2 the first minute, $1 each additional minute. Callers under 18, get your parents' permission before you dial. Mm. Trick or treat, you foolish humans. Your worst nightmare has something special for you today. Dial this number now. If you're one of my lucky callers selected at random, you can talk to me live while you're awake. It's a dream come true. You and me. So dial this number now if you dare. Talk to me live. Freddy Krueger is just a phone call away. $2 the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. Children, get your parents' permission before you die. Once again, foolish friends, Freddy Krueger is on your phone. Dial this number now. I've got some tales to tell. Freddy's favorite bedtime stories. <laughs> Deadtime stories. So dial this number now if you dare and prepare for a scare. Freddy Krueger has a special message just for you. <laughs> Plus, when you dial 1-900-860-4-FRED, you can win in the Freddy's Dead Video Sweepstakes. Two grand prize winners each get a trip for two to Hollywood to attend the third annual Horror Hall of Fame Award Show. One first prize winner gets a real Freddy glove, just like in the movie, autographed by Robert England. Second prize, an official Freddy's Dead cast and crew jacket. And we'll have hundreds of runners-up who'll get Western Graphics Freddy posters, Impel's Freddy trading cards, Metal Blade's Freddy's Dead soundtrack, subscriptions to Fangoria Magazine, Innovation's Freddy's Dead comic books, or graphic novelization. So call today. We've saved the best for last. Two dollars per call, under 18. Get parents' permission, touchstone only. Tell them Freddy sent you. <laughs> Foolish friends, Freddy Krueger is on your phone. Dial this number now. I've got some tales to tell. Freddy's favorite bedtime stories. <laughs> Dead time stories. All brand new, straight from my boiler room to your home. It's Freddy Krueger on your phone. So dial this number now if you dare. Tell them Freddy sent you. Two dollars the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. Children, get your parents' permission before you dial. 